from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm recording this presentation when it is uh, really late in the evening, so excuse me for the very dark background here. Uh, it is my pleasure to be invited to give a presentation to you, so thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity. I haven't been to Pakistan, but this semester actually I have two students from Pakistan, so it's really nice to uh, learn about the country and different stories through the students. Uh, so let me start sharing my screen here. In this short presentation today, I'm going to share with you two of my favorite activities that I often do with my students. And I will explain a little bit more why I chose these activities to present to you. Let me introduce myself a little bit uh, before starting the presentation. Uh, I am the director of the English language program for international students at Chatham University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you don't know where Pittsburgh is, uh, you can think of Pittsburgh as pretty close to New York, about five hours to New York and about four hours to Washington, DC. Uh, in my work, I also work with students from different countries through actually International Academy. Uh, these two organizations are not related, but uh, this is where I work uh, most of my time. I wanna introduce these two activities to you because um, they help to develop students into cultural competence. Uh, in addition, they also help students to practice storytelling and build confidence in who they are. And I think these are actually important to build students' resilience, especially in intercultural contact situations. Why story circles and what, it, what is story circles? This activity is developed by a scholar called Darla Deardoff. She is one of the leading experts in intercultural competence and it has been adopted by uh, UNESCO. So if you search for it, you will find a manual with a lot of information there. Uh, there are about over 100 pages, so it may take long to read it. So, so today I'm going to give you an overview of what it is and also explain how you can conduct a story circle with your students. Um, as you know, this activity is developed to actually develop intercultural competencies and they have to connect people at the individual level. And um, for me as an ESL teacher, this activity also helps to um, help students to be able to tell stories in English, which is actually a very important but difficult skill to, to develop. These are the steps uh, in conducting this activity. Usually when you start the activity, you can set the mood by maybe playing music or asking the participants to do a short breathing exercise. Uh, the next step is to explain the purposes and then you have the participants agree on the guidelines. Uh, the next step is to have them share stories in small groups and then you bring them together to have a debriefing session. So step one is pretty straightforward and in step two, explaining the purposes. As I mentioned, this, is, uh, this activity is to develop intercultural competencies. So these are some of the skills within intercultural competencies that uh, this activity helps to develop. Uh, first, um, participants demonstrate respect to, uh, for others. Uh, in addition, they practice listening for understanding. Now, this is underlined and highlighted here because it is actually pretty difficult to listen uh, for understanding. When we listen, we tend to be ready just to give a response or we form a judgment in our mind instead of really listening uh, to hear the story that other people are telling. And there are other um, purposes here as well, including developing empathy, which is really important uh, for intercultural com communication and develop relationships, which has been shown to be also really important to build resilience. Step three is to have the participants agree on the guidelines. 
And these are some of the fundamental guidelines uh, in order to have a good story so-called session. And usually I share the participants, I share with the participants uh, a handout or uh, in an online environment, I share with them uh, a Google Doc so that they know the the, the guidelines, but they can also add guidelines that they are committed to following when they conduct or when they share stories in their groups. Step four is for the participants to share their stories uh, in small groups. So let's just say you have um, 21, or let's just say you have 20 people in your class or in your group. And uh, during this step, you're going to divide them into smaller groups uh, from four to six people. And then in this small group, they're going to take turns to introduce themselves in up to two minutes by responding to a prompt. And this uh, is one of the prompts that I want to show and I have used it multiple times because I think it is quite productive. Uh, Please tell us your name and three words or phrases that describe your background and why those words or phrases are important to you. Now, this is really important for people to take turns to really listen for understanding and also uh, to, to stick to the time limit. So usually uh, there is a timekeeper uh, in the group uh, to remind the speaker to talk for just up to two minutes here. After the participants have already finished their introduction by responding to the prompt that I just showed you, uh, they will spend two to three minutes to respond to another prompt. Uh, this is one example of a prompt that you can use and there are more prompts in the manual and I actually have a handout that I can share if you wanna choose among those prompts to give to participants. So let's have a look at the prompt here. And I can read it aloud for you as well. What is a memorable experience you have had with a person or people who is different from you uh, in age, religion, gender, socioeconomic, culture, nationality, native, non-native speakers of English, etc. And what did you learn about yourself and or the other person in that experience? So you can see that this is a story that they can tell um, in their group. After the small groups have finished um, introducing themselves and responding uh, to a prompt, they will need to engage in a debriefing session among themselves first in their small group. And these are some of the questions that you can ask the participants to respond to. For example, what did you learn about yourself through this experience? What common themes did you hear from the stories? How has this experience helped you practice listening for understanding? So basically they are reflecting they, on, the, uh, on the sharing experience in the debriefing session. And this is really important. If you want this activity to be effective, there needs to be time for the participants to debrief. Finally, you also bring all the participants together as a big group again and ask them to share, uh, to debrief and also to share. This is also important so that uh, people can also take some, take some lessons away with them. Other steps in this activity include having the participants complete an action plan if they want to continue to learn or, and to develop intercultural competencies, then what should they do, what the action plan is, and you can have participants do this. You can also have the participants complete a feedback form so that you know how well the session goes uh, or maybe other ideas that they may have. I would like to also share some adaptations. As ESL teachers, sometimes maybe our main goal is to really just to get students to talk and share stories. So, and you may also have less time 
it is recommended that you have at least 75 minutes for this activity or 90 minutes. It depends on, on the number of participants. However, if you have less time, you may have to make some adaptations. And I have done that myself. But keep in mind that the intended outcomes uh, may not occur because you make some major changes to the activity. Um, so, however, you can make some adaptations and uh, if you have less time, uh, let's just say just 60 minutes, you may keep steps. Sometimes I don't actually have time to <laughs> explain the guidelines to the participants. And also because my students are second language uh, users and learners, uh, I send the prompts to them in advance so that they can think about them before joining the session so that they can share uh, stories more fluently. And you may have also smaller groups because people have to take turns to talk. So smaller groups will take less time. So these are some of the suggestions that I have if you need to make adaptations to this activity. Um, so again, I have a handout and I'm happy to share it with uh, Quara Tulane so that she can share it with you. Uh, and um, there are also very specific guidelines there as well. So I encourage you to try it. You may like the activity and you may find it really helpful to get students uh, to get to know each other, to tell stories, to connect with each other, not only at the academic and intellectual level, but at the individual level, at the heart level, right? Stories may speak to our heart. Another activity here that I want to share with you. This is more like a writing activity and it is also one of my favorite because uh, I have uh, done it myself and I also have done it with uh, different groups of students. This activity is based on a poem called Where I Am From by George Ella Lyon and you can find it online through this website or you can just search for it. This poem has been so famous that teachers uh, from all over the world have used the poem as a template for students to write similar poems. The nice thing is that this is really a good activity for students to introduce themselves, to actually share different facets of their identities. And I think this is a way for them to grow in confidence in who they are, uh, because we are all different. Uh, but we are all also all the same and it is okay to be different. We are not less than anyone else. So I really like this activity to build writing skills as well as to share stories about who we are. So to share this activity with you, I am going to read you a poem that I wrote for my daughter to introduce who I am to her. So I'm going to read the poem first, and then I will introduce the template that you can use um, to do the activity with the students, with your students. Okay, so this is my, uh, me and my baby when she was uh, maybe nine months. And I wrote this poem in, on September the 10th, 2020, before my uh, daughter turned two. And the name is where I am from for Hallie. And this is a part of a series of poems and picture books that I wanna publish uh, for my daughter. Uh, and I'm using this logo to kind of you know, put everything together. Um, so let me start here. I am from oil lanterns, from straw fans and stick fires. I am from the house on the edge of the village, bare, lonely, it feels separated from the rest. I am from the longan tree and jasmine flowers, whose sweetness and fragrance I miss. I am from peanut candy and bad teeth, from grandfather Phung Duc Hai and grandmother Nguyen Kim Lian. I'm from education is the only way forward and family is everything, from smile and don't frown so much. I'm from death's love is as high as the highest mountain. Mom's compassion is as lasting as water from the source. From Vietnamese folklore in my childhood and fancy English songs in my adolescence. 
I am from the Fung family from Luk Nam and Luk Ngat. From steamed rice and green tea served to guests daily. From four years of your grandpa's absence and grandma's wedding. And seven years of living away from them both. For a better education. For a brighter future. For what brought me here. On our fridge is a collage of pictures of your grandparents, cousins, and relatives. I want you to connect with after each Facebook time, visit, and celebrated milestone. I am from differences and similarities from two languages, from across the big sea, to be here with you and take you to strange and familiar places. So this is the last stanza of the poem. And you may see that there may be a lot of things that you don't know because it is my story. I grew up in Vietnam and um, the things that I had um, may not be common anymore. And that's why I want to introduce myself to uh, my daughter. But when students uh, do write a poem like this, they get a chance to introduce themselves and it can be a start of a conversation among students and they can share different stories and be proud of where they are from. So uh, to move on, actually I'm going to share a template and a student's poem um, so that you can see that this is, uh, this is possible to do. And this is a really fun activity. So let me stop sharing my screen here and let me pull up a Word document. Okay. Um, so usually you can print out this template and um, give it to your students and they can follow the instructions here or the template to write their own poems. But of course, they have to think about uh, things that are meaningful to them, but also they need to think about language so that the poem also reads uh, nicely on the page or when it is read out loud. So for example, here um, in the first stanza, uh, you can say I am from and then object and then from another object and then another object. So I just want to show this to you very quickly. I'm happy to share this handout to you as well. And if you do a search on the internet, you will also see a lot of templates out there. They are pretty much similar. This is just mine um, that I have already made uh, some kind of changes, a little bit, some changes based on my own poem. Um, and okay. Now I would like uh, to share a poem that was written by one of my students after I taught the students how to write this poem. I think I'm not going to read the whole poem to you, but you can just have a quick look at uh, what she did here. And it is published on my website here uh, with edgeling.org here. Uh, so if you're interested, you can also look at this as an example from a student. And it is actually a really good poem here. And I'm sure that she was really proud uh, of uh, doing this and sharing this with other people. Okay, now let me go back to the PowerPoint. What? Um, now I want to wrap up this presentation by just sharing with you a few suggestions. I know that this presentation is related to building resilience through digital collaboration, but I wanted to start not with digital collaboration, but with activities that, um, that can help teachers to achieve certain objectives or that have some engaging materials. So my advice is actually it is important to start with your objective or start with engaging materials that you think that will help students to produce good language or interesting stories. 
And during the process, it is also important to guide the students and provide support to the students, um, including a modeling, right? If you want to teach a poem to the student, I think it is also important that you write it. Uh, so sometimes I, I often write with the students in the story circles activity, it is also important to model an answer as well. So when you give a prompt to students, it is a good idea to answer the prompt yourself first so that the students have a model. And usually when you do that, you can see that the product that they have is much better than without a good model. Finally, I want to talk about technologies a little bit. I actually use a lot of technologies in my work, in my uh, teaching. I have a YouTube channel, I record videos, I try many different activities, I do research in gamified activities. Uh, so I just want to make a few suggestions here uh, related to the two activities that I just shared with you. Um, you can use a Google Doc for collaborative writing, right? So when you share guidelines with students, you can share it um, through a Google Doc if you work online. Um, I use Google Jamboard for um, students to brainstorm ideas, and you can see a very small picture there. They can brainstorm for ideas, they can generate language, they can work on, in this picture, verbs for speaking, not just she said, but also she shouted or screamed or hissed. So those are more kind of descriptive verbs to use to describe the act of speaking. Uh, I also use Padlet for co-construction of knowledge. So for example, I just taught a unit on different holidays in the US during the holiday season, but instead of doing the lecture myself, I have students to contribute um, what they know and also what they can find on the internet and put it together on a padlet. And, and you can see a picture on this slide as well. And I know that it is small. I have written about this, so I'm happy to share the, the link to the article that I wrote about padlet as well. And I'm sure you can learn to use it very quickly. I have also done a lot of virtual exchange for students to have the opportunities to talk with other people and other students from different countries. And Zoom is a good platform. Of course, you have to plan for it. I have conducted the Story Circles session on Zoom. And actually, Clara Tulane also participated in one of my sessions. Um, I have used Discord to also organize uh, many virtual exchange sessions for students from different countries as well. So to me, technologies are always tools and uh, we start with interesting activities, interesting materials, objectives for our teaching first, and then we will find tools uh, to support those. Uh, so with that, I would like to thank you very much again for inviting me to give this presentation. And uh, if you're interested in connecting with me, you can find me on LinkedIn. Or, or on Facebook or uh, through my website that I shared with you um, on the first slide. Uh, thank you again. And I hope to see you in person or virtually again in the near future. <laughs>